Welcome back to Jack of All Trades. This is your host, Joseph. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. It has been a little while since I have posted a video, so I do apologize about that. Uh, as some of you may know, I am currently enrolled in school. I am currently going back to school to learn how to rebuild and paint vehicles, so that way I can hopefully one day use my airbrushing abilities to uh, create a future for myself painting cars. Uh, this particular project that I'm doing right now is actually for a student art exhibit that is being conducted at the school. Uh, so I have uh, done this uh, painting on 24 by 30 stretched canvas. Uh, I gessoed this canvas and sanded it smooth before spraying it with a black Autoborn sealer. Um, now, unfortunately, I did lose some video, so I was not able to show you the process for how I was able to draw out the figure that you're looking at on the screen now. Uh, this was drawn out with white charcoal pencil. So there will be times where you will see me uh, simply use my finger to erase the lines or I will use uh, the Rubicor eraser to erase back. Uh, again, this is a freehand drawing. Uh, I am using freehand shields though to block and protect, to create sharp edges and protect for overspray. Right now we're just using uh, Createx Illustration White in the Creos PS771 to lay in the white foundations, trying to focus mainly on the highlights that I see in the reference material. You'll notice down to the bottom left, I have a black and white reference photo, which I am using to try to establish the shapes, the tonal values, uh, highlights, shadows, midtones. Uh, maintaining the black of the canvas as the darker tones and only spraying in the white to highlight uh, certain areas. Now you will notice that I will spray in an area lightly. Uh, this paint is mixed at about a uh, 2 to 1, uh, between a 2 to 1 to 3 to 1 uh, ratio. Uh, three parts water to one part paint. So uh, again, uh, with w uh, white on black, you really want to spray it on lightly and build up your opacity. If you try to spray it in at full strength right away, uh, you'll get blotchiness, you'll get spotting. Uh, it won't flow or lay down as uniformly as if you reduce it and um, let it kind of fall evenly over the, your surface. Now I did use, uh, because it's illustration paint, uh, this paint does say that you can either use the 4011 reducer or you can use distilled water. Now distilled water is usually ideal uh, if you are going to use the erasing techniques because it actually breaks down the molecular structure of the paint itself to allow it to be more erasable. Uh, in this painting, I actually don't utilize uh, erasing techniques. So that wasn't so important, but it still broke down the paint to it was soft enough that I was able to spray it lightly without going too heavy. Uh, again, now here this is just a balancing act, uh, laying in tonal values as I've seen them, starting off light and darkening them more and more as I go. Uh, I will uh, see an area, I will uh, lay, start to spray into it and highlight it, then I'll step back. Uh, look at my progress and decide if I need to go back in with more tonal value. Uh, this process, again, it, it is time consuming, but it, uh, it does allow you to kind of um, 
work the shapes and uh, of the figure. Now here you'll notice that I'm going in, uh, started to go in with black using my Iwata Custom Micron and the Createx Illustration Black, again reduced with just water. Um, here for just a minute or two you will notice that uh, there was a lack in progress. Uh, you can see that uh, there's some movement going around off camera. Um, basically, I was informed that we were having an inspection of the dormitories first thing in the morning, and I needed to straighten up uh, my living quarters before inspection. Uh, to say that my room is chaotic would be an understatement. I am so packed with art supplies uh, that it is, um, frankly, uh, quite surprising that I even pass inspection. But uh, I do manage to pass inspection each day and uh, continue to do my artwork. Uh, so here in a moment, uh, I am going to return to the artwork uh, again. I uh, started in with uh, the... PS771 and pure white. Now I'm going in with the black to try to reshape uh, some of the areas that I may have uh, laid in too much tonal value or just to reshape things. Um, add some definition and uh, really just refine what I've already done uh, with the white. Uh, I tried not to over spray too heavily with the white so that way I didn't have to go back over it with the black later. Um, but uh, there is again with uh, freehand drawing or painting like this uh, it is again just trying to uh, form out the different shapes that you see um, to create that image that three-dimensional image uh, just using uh, a two-dimensional form. This uh, takes some tricking the eyes, pulling your focus to certain areas while drawing it away from others. Uh, this um, pushing back certain elements to give it the illusion of shape and form. Uh, here you'll notice that uh, I just had a uh, little malfunction with the airbrush. Uh, there was some kind of debris or something in the pathway of the paint that caused it to spit. Uh, again, this could have been a major uh, flaw, uh, reason to cause some artist to give up on the painting, but uh, the, again, with at this stage, you can just use the black and white to erase mistakes, to reshape uh, uh, forms and and objects that you had previously um, laid down. Uh, here you'll notice that uh, I had started on the inner arm of her left arm. Uh, it does look like she has a, a tattoo on this arm. Uh, it wasn't overly garish, and uh, so I did include it. Um, the other figure that I'm going to be adding here in a while, she had a very large tattoo on her chest and her shoulder. Uh, I was going to include it, but I decided just to uh, skip this step and um, draw her in uh, without the tattoo. Uh, I don't know, perhaps to maybe uh, not deter uh, potential buyers who may not see the beauty in her tattoos that I see, but uh, again, I just, I didn't want to uh, overcomplicate this already difficult image. Uh, here you'll see that I am uh, drawing out the shapes using a tool called a propor uh, proportional divider. Now basically what this uh, tool does is uh, you have uh, two ends that are uh, separated by a pin. Uh, now depending on your location, or position of this pin uh, along the holes in the length of the proportional divider will give you different 
aspect ratios or uh, reduction uh, or enlargement of whatever image that you're trying to draw. Now, the way that you use this is that you'll take a particular uh, edge or um, say from one uh, subject to the, to the next and you'll measure out how far of a distance it is uh, between the subjects and you make a small mark then you'll take the next plotting point, say from the brow line to the hairline and take another measurement and uh, draw, in, draw in your shape. Uh, take another measurement from the top of the brow line to the top of the eyelid, from the end of the eyelid to the end of the nose, so on and so forth. And uh, as you continue to just verify that your shapes and your proportions and your distances are the same. So as you'll see many times, I will uh, start a drawing. I'll start a line and determine that it is the wrong angle or that it's too far or too shallow. And so then I'll erase back and fix it until I am uh, have achieved a shape that is pleasing and uh, is you know, going to complete the, the total form. Uh, again, this is white charcoal pencil, so it erases fairly easily uh, from the surface, depending on how much pressure you apply to it. Uh, if you want to erase it back so it doesn't leave uh, too many marks underneath, you can uh, kind of wipe it away and still have a ghost image to show you where the markings are. And again, we just go in uh, using the airbrush to build up our tonal values. Uh, we started with the outline with her arm and her head, uh, then moving into the forehead and the nose, and now onto her cheek and chin. Again, uh, this is a process that um, you know does require patience. Uh, the uh, you'll get to certain points where you think that it just it looks awful it doesn't look anything like what you're trying to achieve uh, you just have to be patient and trust in the process that you're going to get there that you can uh, achieve your goal if you uh, maintain uh, your diligence and and just stay with the image uh, even if you make a mistake uh, just continue on um, think, step back for a moment, think of how you're going to address this issue and, uh, make a plan and, uh, try experiment, try things out. Uh, you know, if it doesn't work in the end, you know, you can always scrap it, try again. But, uh, ultimately, uh, you may find that, uh, you find solutions that work and, uh, a mistake that you initially thought was would be the end of your painting uh, doesn't turn out to be as um, important or detrimental. Uh, again, uh, here we're just uh, the clouds uh, using uh, soft shapes, not uh, moving the airbrush closer and farther away to... Uh, concentrate the amount of opacity in the clouds, how light, how dark they are, uh, how soft the edge is, or how uh, bright it is in contrast to the, to the figures. Uh, again, this is just to try to give that separation so we can see what we're working with uh, in the foreground. Uh, here, uh, as I'm working, um, I will. Uh, I eventually noticed that uh, her no, her eye is pretty low in her face. Um, it is almost in line with her nostril um, because of the position of her head that she's tilted back. Uh, I guess I didn't have as good of a perspective point and uh, started her eye too low on her face. So eventually, uh, here in a little bit, I am going to go in and address that. But um, in the meantime, uh, before we actually get to that point, uh, I was still just uh, trying to build uh, the, the shapes, the highlights, uh, referring back to uh, black and white photo reference, which you cannot see in the video at this point. 
point in time, but uh, it is just below the image. Um, and again, uh, trying to establish uh, the shapes that I see. Uh, her chin, her mouth, her nose, uh, her nostrils, and uh, working lightly to build up uh, my opacity. Um, you know, again, using black and white uh, to, to erase any mistake. That's why I do like this method uh, of painting white over black uh, because I've found that if you try to do this uh, the other way around, uh, painting black and using white to try to erase your mistakes, that it never quite works. Uh, the white will never be as white as the paper. Uh, sometimes there's variations in the, your paint compared to the paper and it'll be whiter or or darker than uh, your surface. And uh, black, however, because the nature of black itself, it tends to absorb light. And um, it's just, unless there's uh, some element in the black that it has uh, more blue or purple or red or some, some other tone mixed in with it for the most part black is pretty uniform and if you uh, spray uh, a black whether it's uh, you know the illustration black or the uh, opaque black um, for the most part the the color is going to match and it can work as a uh, way of erasing uh, mistakes and, and doing that with white paint, uh, you can't necessarily do that. So um, again, I really do like this method for, especially for freehanding uh, in images and, and working an image um, without using paper masks or uh, grid method or anything like that. This is again, truly freehanded uh, in and, uh, rendered out. So, uh, now there's nothing, you know, there's not to say that one technique is superior to another. I think that, uh, depending on what it is that you're painting and what you're ultimately trying to achieve with the image that, uh, each of these techniques has their place. And, uh, if you have the ability to print it out, and to cut your paper stencils, uh, ultimately this is uh, a more precise um, method for for laying down at least landmarks, uh, such as like the nostril, the eyes, the nose, the shape of the face, uh, because uh, you're taking the actual reference and just cutting away from that. Uh, well, as you can tell here, uh, this was drawn and uh, human error, you know, will affect your your outcome. It will affect the ultimate uh, result of your painting. Uh, so here, um, I've pretty much uh, just realized how low her her eye is, and so I had stepped back, took a moment to kind of assess what I was going to do. And now I've gone in to try and uh, just white out the area. The reference is quite a bit uh, lighter than what I had laid in. So I still had a range to work with. Uh, I tried to lay, uh, lay in the white and it wasn't covering very well. And that's because the paint was still very wet. Uh, so I paused for a moment, let it dry turn the canvas sideways so I could have a more uh, natural view of uh, my proportions and how things were uh, developing for her face. And um, again, uh, I was able to move her eye uh, up and forward ever so slightly. Uh, I think even, and now even in retrospect that I could have moved it up even more. Um, but uh, it is definitely a dramatic improvement over its previous location. So uh, I did go ahead and just uh, worked it out from this point. Again, uh, trying to build up highlights, shadows, and 
uh, really define certain shapes. Um, referring back to my reference at all times and uh, utilizing uh, different tools like uh, this freehand mask here that give me some sharp uh, edges and corners uh, and you know uh, this curved French curve here to to kind of help shape out the nose the nose was a bit long and uh, again uh, that had to do with more of when I was drawing it out I angled the nose farther out than what it should have been and it should have been pointed more down but uh, again I was able to go in and reshape this with some shadows and um, highlight sh uh, kind of hide the edge of the nose because in the reference it is not defined and it is uh, being washed out by the highlight or the light source that is uh, shining down from up above. Uh, this light source is highlighting predominantly her nose, her cheek, her forehead, and uh, her lip, the top of her lip and the top of her chin. Um, and obviously her hand, which is up near this area. So that's where it's kind of hard to differentiate between her hand and where her hand ends and her face begins. But uh, this is, uh, again, uh, what makes an image realistic is uh, just drawing what you see, not what you think uh, should be there or uh, what you... Uh, want uh, to be there but just drawing what you see and if you don't see a defined edge if you don't see something that separates it don't add it uh, just uh, you know try to create the the image as true to form as you can that's why again I really like portrait art as opposed to other uh, styles of art because uh, the closer that you can uh, recreate an image the the better it is because that is ultimately uh, the goal is to reproduce your your painting as close to true life as possible and to to make it look like the subject that you're trying to capture uh, the reason that you you decided to paint this person something about them stood out to you it was uh appealing to you and you made the decision that you wanted to try to capture that uh in a painting so again if you can do this effectively and uh as close to the to the reference as possible the better your artwork is going to look so here again just uh, working out shapes um, working out the shadows again by turning it sideways i was able to get a a better uh kind of understanding of where my shapes were and how they were relating uh to the rest of the image uh, once i am kind of satisfied with uh with what i was able to do uh in the face area uh, I do go ahead and uh, turn this image back the regular uh, orientation or the original orientation uh, with her head tilted back um, and here again uh, just referring back to my reference photo uh, making sure that I've captured all the details uh, here there were some details, uh, highlights in that missing in the hand, and uh, they needed to be shaped and uh, defined. And so again, just a balancing act, jumping back and forth. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention once, I, once we started on this image is that I actually switched airbrushes from the uh, Creos PS771 and the Iwata Custom Micron to a Master Airbrush SB86 and a Badger Spirit side feed. I believe this is a 0.2 or perhaps even a 0.3. Uh, this is not my airbrush. This is actually my boss's airbrush uh, at the Custom 
paint shop that I work at. Uh, he had this brush sitting in a drawer and had not used it for quite some time. And uh, since I had never used it Badger before, I asked him if I could borrow it and so I could take it home and try it just to see how it compared to the other airbrush brands that I had tried. And I will say that it functions great. It functions like an airbrush should. Uh, pretty much, like I said, if once you learn the fundamentals of airbrushing, uh, you should be able to pick up pretty much any airbrush and uh, just use it. You just have to kind of practice with it, get accustomed to it for how it sprays, how it reacts. And uh, it had great reaction, great detail. I was able to use it. Um, again, this air, my airbrushes sat for probably a week uh, even though it only took about nine hours to paint this image uh, that was over about a seven day period because I am in school and I wasn't able to work on it uh, like I used to uh, for several hours at a time uh, I had to use uh, work on this as I could uh, here we have gone ahead and moved on to the uh, color portion of the portrait uh, I did switch to two more airbrushes. This is a, both are G Master Airbrush G44. One is uh, loaded with the Burnt Sienna, and the other is uh, loaded with Scarlet. Uh, again, both Createx illustration colors. Uh, we'll use Burnt Sienna as the main tone for the skin. Uh, I will go in and lightly dust with the Scarlet. Uh, to kind of shift the tone uh, to a more natural tone instead of an orange, uh, purely orange tone uh, with uh, tones of red and orange. Uh, I did go ahead and uh, tone in the, the second figure's top, which was red, and now I'm uh, dusted in the burnt sienna and toning in the rest of the face. So here we are uh, at the end of uh, the painting. We have completely toned in both figures. Uh, I am really happy with how this uh, painting turned out. Uh, if you like this process and uh, this was able to help you with your own artwork, please subscribe, like, and share. And leave a comment on anything else that you'd like to see in the future. I'd like to thank you all for taking the time and joining me. And you have a blessed day.